Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutech. Today, we'll be talking about the best five gaming monitors that you can get for $300 in February of 2021 and beyond. In my opinion, if you're gaming, $300 is the perfect baseline price for a monitor, and let me tell you why. With 300 bucks, you'll be getting a 144 hertz refresh rate or above, paired with a 2560 by 1440 resolution, aka 2K, aka 1440p. And for gaming, a high refresh rate is definitely a necessity, and 1440p is the new 1080p nowadays. And most modern graphics cards can definitely support gaming at 1440p too. Now, you can get a 1440p monitor for less than $300, but you will be missing out on a high refresh rate in most cases, as well as good colors, as the cheaper 1440p monitors will usually use a TN panel, which has the worst color range and viewing angle of the three most common panels. So in this video, I'm giving my own parts selections for a specific price range, but perhaps you have a different smaller or bigger budget, or you're looking for something with different specific features and want a more personalized recommendation from a highly trustworthy source. Well, there's this new and upcoming free shopping tool called Luster. It's a free Chrome extension that gives you exactly that. Not only does it find and analyze trusted expert reviews, but it also brings up discussion forums mentioning products like on Reddit or video reviews on YouTube. Let me give you guys a little demo. So I'm looking for the best CPU for around $500. So it gives me the top five CPUs for that exact price range. And it backs up exactly why they're the top five with tons of info and data. Let's take a look at what they tell me about the i9-10900K. It compares a bunch of 1 to 10 scores from multiple trustworthy websites, such as PC Mag, PC Gamer, Windows Central, Tom's Hardware, etc. And then right below that, it shows me all the tech specs, which I really like. The point is, you're going to be saving a lot of time and money using Luster. Link to get Luster is in my description. So keep in mind that this list is in no particular order, but I will give my personal favorite at the end of the video. So coming in at number five is the Viotech GFV27 DAB monitor. It's 27 inches with a resolution of 1440p, has a refresh rate of 144 hertz and a one millisecond response time, all on its VA panel. It's also both FreeSync and G-Sync compatible, so it won't matter if you have an AMD or Nvidia card, you still will be seeing no screen tearing. Now here's the really good part. This monitor has a height adjustable stand. In this price range, you will unfortunately find that most monitors do not have a height adjustable stand, which I would personally never skip out on when buying a monitor. In addition to this, it has a 99% sRGB color gamut, which in short means that you'll have pretty accurate colors. This display also would look great in a dual monitor setup as it has very slim bezels. This monitor also claims to be quote unquote HDR ready, but it isn't HDR rated. So I wouldn't expect very much in terms of high dynamic range ability, but it's still nice to know that there is some sort of HDR tech built in with the screen. And if you're not interested in that, you can toggle it off. And just like most monitors, it is vase amount compatible. As for ports, it has two HDMI ports, one being 2.0 and the other being 1.4, a display port and an audio jack. So a pretty typical lineup of ports. Next up in the number four slot is the AOC CQ27 G2. In most of my top five lists with monitors, AOC does really well. So let's see how this one holds up. One thing to note as I go along is that this is the cheapest option of the five monitors on this list as of February, 2021. So this AOC monitor has a size of 27 inches resolution of 2k or 1440p a 144 hertz refresh rate a one millisecond response time and has a va panel so not the best of colors but certainly not the worst and screen tearing will not be a problem the cq 27 g2 is both FreeSync and g-sync compatible and just like the last monitor i talked about this one also has a height and tilt adjustable stand so aoc is really not holding back on giving you the whole set of features that you want but are there any downsides to this monitor well not really Really, like I said, the panel type is VA, so not the best picture out there. So if you're looking for something with a very nice color, accuracy, and vibrancy, stick around. There is an IPS panel gaming monitor further down on the list. And if we take a look at the ports, there's two HDMI 2.0s, one DisplayPort 1.2, one VGA, and your typical 3.5 millimeter audio out port. Number three on the list is the Pixio PXC 32.7 monitor. This one is definitely the outlier on this list. 
let's take a look. So first things first, this monitor has a size of 32 inches versus the 27 inch size you'll find on the rest of the screens on this list. 32 inches, certainly pretty big, but hey, some people prefer those bigger displays and some even claim that it improves their aim in shooter games. So I did decide to put it on this list for that handful of people. Anyway, back to the listing at specs, it has of course a resolution of 1440p, a 165 hertz refresh rate, a one millisecond response time, and a VA panel. Like I've said, VA is not going to produce the best colors, but there's certainly worse options. Now there is one big thing that you will be trading away by selecting this 32 inch 165 Hertz monitor, and that is height adjustment. Now to some, that would be a deal breaker, and to others, it may not even matter. So that's for you guys to decide. And 165 Hertz, I just want to mention that I wouldn't say that the extra 21 Hertz versus a 144 Hertz monitor, well, it shouldn't be your deciding factor. As when you're hitting refresh rates that high, it seriously already looks buttery smooth and that extra 21 Hertz isn't really going to do much for you, especially if you don't have the strongest of hardware to even be able to hit frame rates higher than 144 frames per second in games. But it's still certainly a solid option if you seek a monitor larger than 27 inches. And for ports, it has two display ports, one HDMI and one headphone out. And I do find that pretty interesting. Usually it's the other way around with two HDMI and one display port. Not a bad thing, just something quite interesting worth pointing out. For making it this far through the video, I'd like to invite you to my February giveaway. In this giveaway, I'm giving out an Intel i5 10400F, an Asus Z490P motherboard, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz CL16 RAM from Oloy, and the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition CPU cooler. All of these parts were only used for benchmarking in my videos, so they're practically brand new. To enter, it's very simple. Like, subscribe, and then click the link in the description or in the pinned comment. Now with this giveaway, you can actually make multiple entries in order to raise your chance of winning. Let me show you. When you click on the giveaway link, you'll be led to this page. You'll see some simple rules and information, and then you'll see the different ways you can enter. Now, each one of these is valid for one entry. So if you do all four of them, you'll get four entries. And if you only do one, you get one entry. So obviously, the more of these you do, the higher the chance you have of winning. Once again, the link is in my description and in the pinned comment. Good luck, everyone. Next up, the Gigabyte G27Q monitor. This display has been my main driver for a while, so I can say a lot of these things I'll go over with absolute confidence. So this Gigabyte display has a size of 27 inches, a resolution of, you guessed it, 2560 by 1440p, a 144 hertz refresh rate, a one millisecond response time, and an IPS panel this time around. And just to remind you, IPS panels have the best colors versus a TN or a VA panel. And no screen tearing for this display, FreeSync and G-Sync compatible right out of the box. This monitor also brags about HDR with an actual rating being HDR 400. So HDR 400 is technically HDR, yes, and it will improve your range of colors. However, it will cause the display to look a little more grayish so blacks will look a little more gray, causing a bit of a washed out look. When using this monitor, I've never really opted for using its HDR as it really just gives a washed out feeling. But again, it technically is still HDR. Moving on, the G27Q also has height and tilt adjustment, very nice. And for ports, it has one display port, two HDMI 2.0 and two USB 3.0, which means if you need more USB ports, this monitor has that. And it really helps if you have a short USB cable for peripherals. Like if your keyboard came with a really short cable, well, you can just hook it up to the monitor. Usually your keyboard's right in front of the monitor anyway. So you won't have to worry about getting an extender to plug it all the way into the back of your PC. So all things considered, it seems this monitor is the full package, but it does have a bigger brother. So let's take a look. So the last monitor that I will be talking about is the previous monitor's big brother, the Gigabyte G27QC. Definitely some significant differences. So let's take a look. Same resolution resolution and response time of one millisecond and 1440p and same size of 27 inches, but a refresh rate of 165 Hertz. Like I said earlier, I personally wouldn't spend the extra for the additional 21 Hertz you'd get over using a 144 Hertz display, but that's just me. The screen is also curved and is rated at 1500R, meaning it does have a pretty noticeable curve versus a monitor that has say an 1800R curve. This monitor also has a VA panel, not an IPS. So you won't get as clear or vibrant of 
colors as you would with using the previous monitor, which is IPS. Also has the same anti-tearing tech being G-Sync and FreeSync. And it seems that this is another monitor claiming to be quote unquote HDR ready without the rating. So it's interesting to see that they at least have HDR tech in there, but they don't give any specific details or rating, which leads me to believe that the high dynamic range in this G27 QC probably isn't anything significant. And for ports, there's one display port 1.4, two HDMI 2.0, two USB 3.0, so same port as its little brother. So this one is more pricey than the G27Q. Is it worth it? I would say that comes down to preference. There's a lot of differences. If you're only in it for competitive gaming, I would say go for the G27QC. But if you want great colors with a minor difference in max refresh rate and no curve, then the G27Q is the move. So we discussed five different monitors, all for $300, give or take. But which one is the absolute best? I am going to have to go with the Gigabyte G27Q, and here's why. It's IPS, so it has the best panel for color accuracy and vibrancy, and it's super noticeable. When I made a switch from a VA panel to IPS, I said to myself, I'm never switching back to a VA panel. Moving on, it also has a one millisecond response time. A lot of the time you'll find that IPS panel displays have a higher response time of around three to five milliseconds. I can't forget mentioning that the G27Q does have height and tilt adjustment. I never get a monitor without it. It really is the best monitor you can get for the price in my opinion, and it's totally worth spending the extra bit for an IPS panel. Agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments. Everyone has their own preference when it comes to monitors, curved, flat, don't care about color accuracy, whatever it may be. Also, I do wanna do a hands-on review with one or more of these monitors. If that's something you guys would be interested in, you should definitely let me know. I could also go ahead and buy two of them, do a comparison, something like that. It's up to you guys. Let me know your ideas down below in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. Have any comments or questions, drop a comment below. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub. Also, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Thanks for watching, peace out.